the 2000 expansion. The Columbus Blue Jackets and the Minnesota Wild joined the NHL. So, when they came in, there was little hubbub at the time because uh, they were the 8th and ninth expansion teams added in a decade. And, you know, 7th and 8th. Yeah, 7th and 8th expansion teams added in less than a decade. But when you look, they've both been very successful. Minnesota was expected to be a successful franchise based on their, you know, uh, grassroots, uh, the, the amount of college hockey played in Minnesota, the fact that it's a cold environment, so, you know, hockey is going to be something that the kids are more likely to want to play than they will in, say, California or Arizona. Just environment says so. And it's Minnesota. Columbus was considered to be a, a slam dunk from the point of view that Columbus, Ohio is a big city, and the Blue Jackets were the first major franchise from any of the big leagues to go into that market. Now, I talked about Columbus and their success story this year, but people who are uh, subscribers on this channel were surprised about a month ago when I said I named off Stanley Cup contenders and I named the Minnesota Wild. And at the time, they didn't have a great record. They are just a wild, a wild card team. And uh, they weren't weren't really setting the house on fire, so to speak. Well, they're setting the house, the neighborhood, and the league on fire right now with eight wins in a row. And I really think Minnesota this year can break through. And, and it's funny because you look at a team like Columbus, you look at Minnesota, and not only are the expansion brethren, but they're both looking for that big breakthrough in the playoffs. Minnesota had a decent run when they went to the uh, conference final back in 03, I think it was 03 or 04. I remember they came back from three games to one down against Vancouver. That's when I started hating Minnesota. I don't hate Minnesota anymore. I can honestly say, having watched them this year, they're boring to watch. I'm not going to lie. They're boring to watch. Uh, Bruce Boudreaux's working with what he's been given, but I'll be damned if they aren't playing fantastic hockey. And when the summer was, you know, at its peak and all of the free agency uh, hubbub was going on, I was kind of surprised that Eric Stahl was still being seen as a first or second line center because in my eyes, he wasn't that. He's proven me wrong. Absolutely. Um, he's not putting up the point totals as he used to, but Eric Stahl is that good um, in terms of his all-around game. Uh, but it's funny because when I looked at Columbus, all kinds of scoring, all kinds of that, you know, just fantastic. When I look at Minnesota, I don't see that scoring. What I see is Devin Dubnik having an insanely good season. 948 save percentage, 5 shutouts, 1.55 goals against average. 16 wins, 6 losses, 3 overtime losses. That's pretty good. His backup, Darcy Kemper, 907 save percentage. That's come up from where it was, 2.97 goals against. And he's 3-2-1. But Dubnik, right now, he'd be a Vesna favorite. And that's over Carey Price. He may even be a heart favorite right now. It's intimidating, the kind of season that Dubnik's having. Can he keep it up? No. I don't think, I don't think anybody can stay at that level. But he is a major part of the reason that the Minnesota's where they're at. Uh, Eric Stahl has played well. Uh, Ryan Suter is Ryan Suter. Uh... Brodeen has, has turned it around. Uh, Jonas Brodeen was, at the start of the year, a guy I looked at and said, you know what, with the amount of money he's making and with the amount of points he's not getting, maybe they expose him in the expansion draft. That's not going to happen. Uh, Dumba's been decent. Uh, Spurgeon is fantastic defensively. Uh, Foline and Scandella are, well, to me, they're the guys who are most likely to go in the expansion draft. 
but I've been impressed with a lot of what Minnesota's done this year, and it's really been a team effort. And and while the goals aren't there, and they're not, I think if I look at let's see, um, how many twenty goal scorers will they have by season's end? I mean, Eric Stahl's got ten already, so he'll get twenty. Charlie Coyle's got eleven, so he'll get twenty. Granlin's got seven in thirty-one games. Odds are he fin- falls short, but let's give it to him. Uh, and then Nito Niederreiter, uh, Nito Ryder gets twenty. Miko Koivu gets twenty. So five. Say five. Zach Parise has the outside shot at it if he can stay healthy. And if Jason Pominville gets hot, nah, Pominville's not going to do it. Maybe Jason Zucker. I don't know. It's just, it's funny because I look at Minnesota and the individual players don't impress me as much as they do in Columbus. Like Columbus has got a lot of really good, solid you know, players. But as a team, Minnesota impresses me quite a bit. And, and I don't know that I'd want to play them in the playoffs either. I mean, their top four centers enlisted as centers. Stahl, Coyle, Granlund, Koivu. And... Okay, for face-offs, Koivu's got a 50, 54.9% uh, rating. Stahl's 50.9%. Uh, Pominville's taken 31 face-offs and won 51% of them. Charlie Coyle's only taken 30 face-offs, and Granlin's only taken 12, so they're both being played on the wings. Uh, let me see. Tyler Grayovac, 82-81, so he's got he's over 50% in face-offs. Halla is over 50% in face-offs as well. And, and I look at that because when I see a team that's doing really, really well, usually there's some really good face-off guys there. Uh, and Koivu takes a lot of important draws for Minnesota. The the kid, too, that I'm, I've been impressed with, and he hasn't played a lot of games, is Erickson Eck. Uh, Erickson Eck, coming into this season, I was hoping he'd get some games. And when I've watched Minnesota and he's he's been playing for them, he's been very noticeable, and he's he's a very solid player. I think while Minnesota doesn't have the, the sexy uh, appeal of a Chicago or a St. Louis in that division, Minnesota has a lot going for them. Uh, their blue line is fantastic. Their goaltending, as I said, is right now flawless. Their offense, you can punch holes in one line or two, but they have they can roll four lines. Um, the only one that I look at and I say, well, he's kind of a placeholder to me is Chris Stewart, but I've, I haven't been a Stewart fan for, for a while now, for about three years. I remember at one point Canuck fans were all, oh, we have to get Stewart. We have to get Stewart. Let me take a look and see if I can remember which season that was. Cause he was, he was a free agent that year. And then he hasn't done really much of anything since. Be under his bio. Should be under his bio, anyways. I think. I'm on the TSN site, so it sometimes takes a while to load. Do do do. I think it was 2013. I think it was 2013 when Canuck fans were all chiming in. Oh, we've got to get him. We've got to get him. He just stands out for me. Because I, I remember at the time arguing he's he's not that great. And being told I was wrong. Shadow, if, if you want to see me, fine. But don't stab me with your nails. That's not cool. I don't know what that was. Everybody's downstairs, so I don't know what that could have been. Grr. Anyways, uh, Stewart's always kind of teased with his potential, and this year he seems to be teasing even more than... Well, not more than usual necessarily, but last year he had 20 points in 56 games, which was considered a disappointment, and this year he has 8 points in 31 games. And yet, when I see him playing for Minnesota, he seems to get it, and he seems to be part of this 
thing they're doing right now. And it's it's kind of fun to watch. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, can Minnesota keep this up? I know Minnesota's likely a playoff team. And they've been one and out for a long time now. Does anybody else see them as a, a dangerous team come playoff time? I do. But I'm sure there are going to be people who say, well, until Dubnik does it in the playoffs. And to those people, I say, you're probably right. But I remember that comment being leveled at Bishop a couple years ago, and now Bishop's not considered to be a problem in the playoffs. It's funny how that works. One good playoff run, and all of a sudden, you don't hear that, that complaint anymore. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're just browsing through. And uh, I went with Ugly and Gorgeous at the same time today. The Ugly Canucks jersey and the beautiful Rangers hat. So I like to change things up a little bit. Um, and for people asking, why would you do that? Well, I'm wearing 1994 today. I feel 94 Stanley Cup final kind of day today. Anyways, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, I will uh, be back again very soon. I'll be back later tonight with uh, more videos. I know... There's only two games in the NHL tonight, so I am going to go to Castle Fun Park. Uh, Noah's back tonight, so uh, myself and Yvonne and the boy, or we're going to go to Castle Fun Park without little kids. Because sometimes it's more fun to go to a arcade without little kids. Besides, we can play air hockey and pool, and uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, anyways, yeah, I will talk to you all again real soon.